Today we're taking you on a journey to the home of La Mazzocco in Florence, Italy. We visit the incredible Academia del Cafe where we get to drink beautiful coffee and we see the full historical new tour that talks about La Mazzocco's history. We even get to chat with Guido Bernardelli, the CEO of La Mazzocco. We go on a very special tour through the actual La Mazzocco factory and see where all the beautiful machines are made and where the magic takes place. So hang about, this is gonna be epic. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, we're pretty excited because we're heading our way down to Florence. Uh, we're gonna go join the Lumberzocco team. They're hosting us for a couple of days, uh, showing us a bit around Florence. We're gonna see uh, the factory and we're about to jump on one of these bullet trains to get down there in about an hour. So hope you enjoy this journey. Uh, we're super excited to share it with you. I've never actually been on a bullet train before, so I was pretty excited to be hitting the railway at speeds at over 300 kilometers an hour on our way from Milan to Florence. We had no time to waste as soon as we landed in Florence. We jumped straight into a taxi for a 20 minute ride up into the beautiful hills of Italy to Accademia del Cafe. Our first impressions of Florence were, it looked absolutely amazing, but having conversations with our Uber driver was a little bit challenging. Oh, okay. I definitely need to brush up on my Italian. Academia Cafe. Oh. Pretty flash. We ran out of time and didn't have a chance to go and check in at our hotel, so it was time to find a place to stash our bags while we got into this tour. As we entered into Academia del Cafe for the first time, you could just tell this is going to be an amazing experience. So we have cold brew, we have filter, but I would recommend if I can, um, starting off with trying our espresso classic blend. This is roasted here by Marco. Okay. And uh, nutty chocolate and creamy milks. Yeah, great. Otherwise, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll drink single black and then okay. lava milk, so... You're not a blend. Uh, no. <laughs> Can't say thank you. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, lever there and... Yeah, that's cool. How amazing is this one-of-kind machine which has all the different types of brew oh, groups that Lamazocco has to offer? Yeah, espresso on the Ethiopian. Okay. And uh, just a, a latte on the blend. Okay, perfect. Yeah. This is Nora, a WBC judge and a former German barista champion. She is now the head of coffee education at Academia. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Prima, beautiful. Yeah. Now we catch up with all the other Aussie delegates. We're going for a tour through Academia, which is including demonstrations, displays of early manufacturing, the historical cafe from the Bambi Brothers, and a coffee margaret exhibition.
absolutely blows my mind to think that these machines are all hammered by hand and in one full piece. After having used and worked on Lamazocco machines for so many years, I really found this incredibly fascinating. So the awesome thing about the factory here at Lamazocco is the heritage that re they're retaining and we, we sometimes forget about in the digital age all the cool stuff. This is Piero's original drawing board and all the tools he used to design uh, obviously here the original linear classic so so special about to see a uh, piece of history. And here they have this amazing massive kinetic sculpture made entirely of scraps from the Lamazocco factory. So the, the name of the wall exhibit is Coffee Migrant Migrant Coffee. The first chapter is Brazil. And here we're about to enter into Academia's new Coffee Migrant exhibition. A plant I've never even seen. People think I'm crazy. Maybe I am. But I couldn't see any other options. Because it's what needs to be done. There's too much hunger here. Too much poverty. The landowners bleed us dry and farming doesn't pay. So that's it. I'm off. Off to Brazil. Off to Brazil. We're off to grow coffee. A plant that I've never seen. Because that is what needs to be done. The exhibition tells the story of the Italians migrating to Brazil to grow coffee, which includes ship logs and historical artifacts representing their journey. So uh, Lumberzak was fortunate to find one of the original bars here and cafe setups that the Bambi brothers had. It was uh, up in a cafe somewhere in the hills. They've got it, resurrected it, and here it is in real life again where you can enjoy an espresso from one of their newer machines. How awesome is it? Actually, I was a little bit wrong there because it's not one of the new machines. It's actually an old GS. It's a 1973 fully refurbished. have a whole um, range of pictures talking about the water flow and how the dual boiler systems actually work from Lamazocco which made them so unique. Uh, you've got the cold water coming into the rear boiler, it's being boiled up for a steam pressure of 124 degrees, it then comes back out into a mixing valve being added back with cold water again before it actually enters into the front group boiler which would be set by another PD, PID control anywhere between 90 and 95 degrees and flooding the whole group head with hot water to give you that temperature stability. So really cool to be able to see that in a workflow and then these videos are telling us how it actually works, how they came out with this technology so many years ago. success thanks to a unique and special recipe that many don't know about. 
The main ingredient in this recipe is talent. Like the talent of the Bambi brothers, Giuseppe and Bruno. Two Florentine artisans, sons of a metalworking family, who in 1927 built their first espresso machine, La Fiorenza. But as you know, talent isn't enough. You also need competence. Piero, the son of Giuseppe, never held back when his workers needed a suggestion or some advice. The location is important too. After the war, the Bambi workshops moved right here to the hills of San Bartolo. Everywhere you go, there are so many incredible displays and proud presentations showcasing LM's history. This timeline here is of the Bambi family, which is then replicated in the evolution story of the machines that they've made. Here is a KB90 matching the restored Alfa Romeo van that Giuseppe Bambi used to drive around and show off their machines. It's amazing to be in this um, curation here of the whole history of La Mazzocco from all the way from the grandparents right through to today. And when we look at coffee machines, this is actually the first machine that was made. Uh, it's called the Forenza and it was, it was made uh, 10 of them actually while they were doing, um, not even in the coffee industry, they were doing car parts and other things. Um, but essentially this machine has no electronics. You, you basically start boiling the water, the steam comes out. Uh, because it's a two bar pressure, it would go and brew through the coffee um, and you had to manually open the valve so that it didn't blow up because there is no pressure release valve. This is not a steamer, it's a safety valve. So that just blows my mind considering some of the advancements we had. The next stage is something over here and um, this lever group was, was made by Gargia. So we, um, basically the technology changed where you could increase manual pressure as separate to the hot water pressure. Um, this is all a handmade design here um, back in 1953 and you can see the car grill basically on the front so totally inspired um, from what was happening in the family on the other side of, of the business. Um, and he was only 19 when um, Piero actually did this design. So amazing that he could get involved in, in actually building his own machine. Uh, it wasn't something he wanted to do, he was in the fabrics game, but essentially uh, his brother sadly passed away. So he stepped up to the plate and made a beautiful machine. Then as time went by, dual boiler technology started to really um, look at how we could get more pressure stabilization, temperature stabilization, and the delivery uh, in a more ergonomic way. So from 1971 to 81, the GS is, uh, was the key machine that was used. And you can see it here. Now we're up to GS3, uh, and obviously a lot more technology gets added into that. But the pinnacle of the business and the growth was definitely the Linear Classic. And this machine was designed to disappear and be linear and hidden not to stand out and be this dominant thing uh, in the cafe. It was all about the barista, keeping things simple, easy, and that definitely defined the business and definitely designed the culture of coffee and made the huge expansion around the world. Of course at Academia, they have a beautiful display showing off all of their La Mazzocco home machines. Also a range of labs including a roasting lab, a sensory lab, an espresso lab, a materials library and a lab for cupping analysis.
Menorah who made us that coffee earlier. She also has her own lab for ceramics where she makes some beautiful handmade coffee mugs which you can purchase and take home. Here is their coffee greenhouse. It's right in the middle. It's an indoor plantation to understand how coffee tree grows in the functioning ecosystem. To finish up the day, the heads of LM gave a presentation and an overview of their new coffee migrant exhibition and all the other projects that they're working on. Party got started. The entertainment and the food was fantastic, seriously. You've never had a real steak until you've had a Florentine steak. What an incredible start this was to our three days in Florence. We met so many people and was absolutely blown away by the Academia del Cafe and the generosity and passion from the entire LM team. We just feel so grateful and humbled to be a guest here. morning I wasn't dusty at all. I was feeling awesome. So we jumped on a bus with all the other Australian contingent and we made our way up to the LM factory which is about an hour drive up oh, into the hills. <laughs> After the party last night, and I needed to catch up on sleep. No, seriously, in actual fact, I actually came down with a bit of a cold. I wasn't feeling well at all. Spectacular views of the Florence skyline and one of the most famous landmarks, the Cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore, with its huge dome. As you can see outside, it's a little bit gloomy, but it's still so picturesque on the drive into the hills of Tuscany. with great Italian hospitality, a hearty meal is required before we skip across the road to the factory. Holding the door here is Craig Milton, the owner of Brutech. He's one of the nicest blokes we'll come across and a true gentleman. Over lunch, we got to meet the R&D team, which are the engineers and the product designers and the product development team that are responsible for all of the great machines that come out of Lamazocco. Rather than the main entrance, we were taken through the side mod bar entrance. Perhaps they didn't want the Aussie riffraff coming through the front door and causing any trouble. Here is a replica of the nearby Mugello Raceway circuit. You can actually hear the cars from outside in the car park when they're racing. The staff here get to use it in their break times. He 
here we have a fantastic historical display of a lot of fully restored machines from across the years. It's so nice to be on the tour and meet and connect with other Australians working in the coffee industry, hearing their stories, their challenges and learning about what's working for them. There's Sarah from Bean Team Magazine taking in the country views. Time for a quick espresso before we head off into the factory tour. I've been fixing machine for uh, at least uh, 18 years right now. So, well, okay, I've been fixing machine for 10 years, but then I, I moved to the R&D department, so I got promoted to a more responsibility role. And uh, I'm very thankful because my previous experience in the field as a, as a technician uh, made me understand uh, how we can improve uh, the machines. So, uh, I joined the company back in 2004, a long time ago. Uh, actually, my adventure starts here, starts in Australia. So, I'm very familiar to, to the coffee that you guys know. And, um, um, I started as a field technician and now I mostly do innovation projects. So what you see here is not the original factory. The original factory is in Piano San Bartolo where we had the, the barbecue yesterday. So back in that uh, factory, we, the peak of the production was around 2,000 machines a year, which was already a miracle uh, <laughs> if you consider the space and uh, uh, and also the logistic uh, uh, it was a challenge for you yesterday to, to stop the bus in the middle of the road. Can you imagine a, a container truck? Mm. So we moved here in 2009 and uh, we reorganized the production and here we are able to uh, produce up to 20,000 uh, 20, machines per year. Uh, this is uh, like a very small attempt to uh, create a, like a um, chronology of all the machine that we produced uh, in the last uh, 90 plus years. So we, we were founded by the Bambi brothers in 1927. Uh, the, the two Bambi brothers, uh, Giuseppe and Bruno, uh, were very good tinsmiths. So they were very good in the bending metal. And uh, they started uh, doing um, Espresso uh, on upon request from a guy in Rome, Mr. Uh, Galli, that uh, asked them to produce uh, an espresso machine. They asked espresso what? And uh, that is the very very first uh, Lamazotti espresso machine, which is not a Lamazotti yet, but it's called Florencia, which is the uh, ancient Roman name of Florence. And they actually realized that there was a big potential uh, of this booming market of this way to consume uh, coffee. Uh, and they started doing uh, espresso, producing uh, handmade espresso machines. So between 1927 and 1971, there, were, there was no machine similar to another. So every machine was unique. So we used to have a foundry within the company. Uh, we used to build our own molds to do like uh, the, the micro, micro fusions. And uh, this is the perfect example of, uh, of unique machine. So um, that is the Lamazocco national model. So it's a lever machine built around 1963. And uh, machines of the same series are very, very different one to another because uh, every three machines uh, were built, we had to dispose the mold. So we had to create another mold and <coughs> saw a different shape, a different uh, um, uh, design and so on. We started doing 
serious machine in 1971 with the GS model, so the Gruppo Satro, which was the very, very first uh, double bar machine. Uh, well, as you can see, the very, very first machine ever produced uh, were vertical. So that is nothing but a pressure cooker. It's just a pot full of water, of boiling water, and uh, it wasn't very ergonomic. Uh, working on such a machine really requested a huge physical effort from the barista. Uh, in those days, the barista was called machinista, the machine operator, not barista, because that was almost like a like a like a train. <laughs> you know, you have to operate valves and uh, being uh, uh, very careful because you're dealing with high pressure and high temperature. Uh, well, suddenly, this machine, if uh, wrongly operated, could even explode. Uh, like stories about uh, espresso machine exploding in the bar with like huge uh, damages to people and things. Uh, but the Bambi noticed that uh, working on such a machine obviously was difficult, so they thought about uh, uh, building a horizontal, an horizontal water machine. In 1939, they had this idea, and uh, thanks to this intuition, they made the job of the barista much easier, because by having a machine that is horizontal instead of vertical, you can have more than one barista working at the same machine per time. Uh, that was 1939, we have the patent. Uh, fortunately, we lost uh, the original uh, first uh, horizontal body machine during the war. And uh, we're still trying to recover, but it would be almost impossible. But we still have the documents that uh, um, testify that uh, we we made the first uh, patent in 1939. Uh, so, these machines were uh, doing a very, very different espresso than today. Obviously, the brew ratio and the recipe was... Well, look at the basket. Mm. So this basket carries almost uh, like 40 grams. So the brew ratio was one to one. 40 grams of coffee, 40 grams of beverage. And the beverage extracted with this machine was very close to a mocha pot. So very dark, bitter, harsh, no crema. We started having the crema uh, right after the war, because obviously uh, since there was the need to extract a better drink from less coffee ground, because obviously after the war there was a huge economic crisis. So um, the machine, the first machine producer realized that in order to extract a better coffee, maybe you need less temperature and more pressure. That's how the lever machine was invented. The lever machine develops more pressure thanks to a piston, which is loaded by a spring, and with that machine you can extract 25 milliliter of good coffee only using seven grams of ground coffee. And with the crema. And crema is nothing but uh, emulsion of CO2, water, and coffee oil. And it's only possible through uh, high pressure. Unfortunately, Barista got very lazy in, uh, in late 60s because activating the lever was very tiring. Uh, pulling down the lever is like almost like 20 kilograms of effort. So doing that thousand times a day was quite difficult. So, um, espresso machine manufacturers, they started uh, using a hydro compression pump. But this doesn't allow for a perfect uh, extraction because the pump only develops uh, um, stable, flat uh, profile. The best profile for uh, uh, the perfect extraction is actually the level profile, where you have low pressure at the beginning to produce the coffee, a pressure peak in the middle uh, to uh, kick out all the solid compounds and the sugars and the aromatic, uh, good aromatic compounds, and uh, uh, ramping down pressure to avoid over structure. That's how we, we started doing, again, Leva in 2017 and Strada in 2011 and now Strada X. Because actually a flat nine bars profile is not the best way to extract coffee. Uh, another milestone in the Zorco production, actually as I previously mentioned, is uh, the GS. The GS model is the very, very first double bar machine. 
With this machine, we start uh, building like uh, machine built in series, and uh, we actually start using only surgical grade stainless steel. So one of the main feature of Lamarzoc is that we don't like brass, we don't like copper because brass and copper are not food safe. Copper releases copper oxide, which leads to Alzheimer's disease in the long term, and uh, brass contains lead, which is poisonous. So that's why we build machine only with surgical grade stainless steel. Uh, is uh, stainless steel is IZ three sixteen L, so low in carbon, high in chrome and molybdenum. So it's a very good material. It's the safest and cleanest material to build machines, but it's incredibly difficult to weld. Later. In, in the factory floor, I'll, I'll show you how we cut the pipes and we hand weld them. And uh, let's go in the production. But first, we pass through the R and D department. Challenge. This day, this is the R and D office. Well, right now, they're having a coffee break, probably. <laughs> so here we have uh, around 20 uh, engineers. Uh, these guys are mechanical engineers, so they, uh, they do design hydraulics and also um, housing and frames of the machines. This room is the lab where we test the old prototypes. That's why it's kind of top secret. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not supposed to disclose any, any details uh, that is happening in this room. So, uh, as I previously said, here we have prototypes. Can I mark it? Sure. Thank you. Well, now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you recorded will be used against me. <laughs> In a court of law. Yeah. So, lab. Lab here, we, we, we have like a, a water point where we can uh, uh, create a, and simulate any, uh, any water from anywhere in the world. So, uh, we can uh, remove all the minerals and then... then <laughs> We, 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 we tried it and we succeeded. Yeah, and uh, we test the prototypes. In this other room, uh, we have uh, 3D printers for fast prototyping. So we have three plastic 3D printers, a uh, salt spray uh, chamber where we can actually, if you come closer, No, oh, yeah, Mission Impossible. Ten, ten. <laughs> so here we print uh, a parts uh, for the fast prototypization, and we have three plastic printers. Uh, we have a climatic chamber. In that chamber, we can uh, replicate any temperature from zero. Actually, no, from minus. Uh, let me see. We can replicate any temperature between uh, minus sixty and plus 80, and any uh, moisture between 0 and 90% uh, uh, humidity. So it's like uh, uh, having a machine in the Arctic Circle or uh, in the tropics. And by, by putting a machine in there, we actually can replicate any condition. And uh, over there, the noisy thing is a salt spray chamber. In that, uh, in that chamber, we can uh, speed up uh, corrosion phenomena. Basically, is a salty steam bath, and we place in that chamber the boilers to see how fast they can uh, become like the boilers in Perth. <laughs> we also have a fourth uh, uh, 3D printer that prints in stainless steel, but it's not in this building. Uh, it obviously, is a very expensive piece of equipment. And uh, we bought that, uh, that printer in uh, coordination with um, the University of Pavia. So now the, the printer is in Pavia. And that printer prints in stainless steel. Yeah. <laughs> it was very useful, that printer, to, um, to print the very, very first group of the KB90. Let me see here. Nope. <laughs> yeah, wow. This is another um, nice lab. 
uh, we uh, employ in this lab the veterans of La Marzocco production. These guys yes. are um, appointed <laughs> to uh, build uh, all the prototypes and uh, they are like artists. You know, you give them the blueprint and they can build everything. Yeah, it's so like they, crazy. Uh, and they've been working um, for Lamazoko for like at least like 30 yesterday. plus years. Stop me getting in. Although they're very young. <laughs> they're almost like, they're in their 50s, but they started when they were 15. So they mastered every single part of the production. So they can build a machine from scratch, every body of them. And uh, well, I can show, I can introduce you to them very quickly. Hmm. Salutate ragazzi. Massimo Valdaccioni and Roberto Pettinelli, they are like the, the, the veterans oh, of the company and they, they are appointed to, to build the prototypes. Oh, right. hmm. Don't film, don't film, don't film. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and this is the electronic office. Yeah. These guys are uh, responsible for uh, uh, electronic and firmware design. We have... Uh, uh, what is it? Qua dentro? Okay. We have Luca, we have Cosimo, we have Daniele, <laughs> and these guys they take care of uh, electronic design, like hardware and also software. Uh, Luca has been uh, recently involved into the Strada X. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a zoo, they are real people. Yeah. We can interact. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. stare. But there's no to the, guy, the, the ones that are missing are having uh, meetings in some... No, no, no. Co coffee meeting, yeah. So now we go to uh, building number two. So we have four buildings. This is Torre 1, which means Tower 1. The village where we are is called La Torre, the tower. So this is Torre 1. Uh, we moved to Torre 2. And uh, we have Torre 3 and Torre 4. So we started with like this building. I remember back in 2009, here we used to build a, a professional machine. Yeah. And down, no, actually here was a home machine and professional was uh, the ground floor. And now here is just offices and production in the uh, ground floor. And we have three more buildings around here. We expanded quite a lot, yeah. yeah. Here, we have a gym. Yeah, there's a gym with uh, techno gym uh, uh, stuff, which is pretty good, yeah. <laughs> you wanted to work out tonight? <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, no, we have treadmills, we have like... Come see who's the fittest after that many days of food. <laughs> The coffee plants are from the, from the Academia. They produce quite a lot uh, uh, of uh, cherries. Yeah. The slot car? Ah, yeah, thank you, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, Mugello is popular for three things. Knives, they produce very good knives and made knives in the region. The second thing is well, they, apparently they produce very good espresso machine in this region. <laughs> and the third one, but also very important, is the racetrack. They do MotoGP racetrack here. It's around the corner. Like, literally, it's uh, four kilometers uh, in that uh, direction. And uh, the racetrack was built by Ferrari to test their cars. But then, since uh, a Formula One regulation didn't allow the producer to have their own uh, test uh, racetrack, uh, Ferrari sold it to the region and they are racing uh, the um, uh, MotoGP uh, motorbikes uh, championship and that's the exact replica of the racetrack. It's uh, 5.7 kilometers. I know that because we did a race, like a running race. Oh, running race. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Six years ago, yeah, we did a running uh, race uh, at the racetrack and it goes up and down, so it's like Pretty challenging. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's nice, huh? So we quickly moved to, uh, through the, R &D, uh, the after sales department, my former department, which is here. Unfortunately, it's not very busy because all my colleagues from the after sales are still stuck at host. Yeah. 
two. Two? Yeah, it's today and tomorrow. Ciao. So that is the old sign from the old factory. Pretty cool place, eh? Hey? I'm gonna get inspired. Hang here and... Yeah. Wizard's office in uh, the other building. Uh, next to the tiles. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate this in 2040. Uh, nope. Oh, uh, so upstairs. Good. So good. So as I said, that today is not, it's not very busy here because all the all the techs are uh, busy in the dismantling host. Uh, here is where we do uh, trainings, as you can see from all the cutout model. Well, many of you might be familiar with, with the coffee boiler. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to try it? Well, I, I have you ever it. done it? Yeah, yeah. Heavy, yeah, right. heavy stuff, right? It's actually got a bit so of water in there. So we could have built oh, this nice. boiler with like one third of the material. Why so, why so heavy? Yeah. Because stainless steel doesn't retain as much heat as copper and brass does. So we had to build it very heavy to keep the thermic inertia. And, um, well, this boiler is meant to withstand only 12 bars of pressure, but it could literally withstand more than 200 bars of pressure. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, it's very, very robust, built to resist. So here we do trainings, as I mentioned. Uh, Normally we have uh, at least one training, one training a week and uh, we invite uh, every uh, Lamazogo reseller for periodical updates to keep up their, the knowledge. If you follow me this way, So this is another room, obviously, with all my Yeah, it's, cool. it's very cool. Thank God the tool are tidied up. Yeah, for sure. Normally the tools are scattered around. Today is like pretty, pretty I love tidy these half-cut sort of machines. Uh, that's also another training room. We almost have all, all machines installed. Yep. And uh, that way. Right. Yeah. I always prefer to like to convey less stuff than like overloading you guys with information. So I want you to retain important things, not just bullshit. <laughs> that was just for you, John. They thought that just for you. John works for Ah, okay. <laughs> This is the HR department. And over there we have the sales department. This is a little uh, exhibition of all the merchandising that we did along the years. Yeah, Unfortunately, surfboards are not uh, yeah. available anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we only made a couple. Poker oh. series. Yeah. This counter is a leftover from uh, a trade show in Rimini that we did in 2014. And uh, it was inspired, obviously, on the Strada. And it's made like of solid stainless steel. And it's crazily heavy. <coughs> uh, 
as you can see from all the dents, it was, yeah. it was quite a challenge to carry it from, uh, from the trade show all the way here. It's like three parts, it's pretty big and heavy. Uh, employees like uh, almost 200. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, like uh, in the factory, for 200, uh, together with the offices, uh, around 300. Then uh, it's depending, mostly it's depending on the uh, peak of production. Uh, we have temporary employees that like for uh, small, uh, small parts of the production that are uh, seasonally employed. So, That's cool bar. Next so, section is gonna be uh, grinders production, so Pico and Swan production, and Maker. So we, we go through this door. Yeah, how many amazing cool spots there are to play, learn, be creative. This is just oh, amazing, mind blowing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is the e-shop uh, warehouse. This is like the city warehouse. Two boxes in the corner. What do you Yeah, like all goodies and merchandising is here. So, now we enter uh, the Pico production. Oh, good. Oh, I want to buy one. I want to buy a Pico. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, is this Australia coming to Australia? No, it's not. Two groups. Yeah. Good on you, Craig. Holding the door again. What a legend. <laughs> well, what you notice here is that uh, uh, products are moving on conveyor belts. That uh, never, uh, never happens at Amazoko. Normally, uh, machines uh, are built on uh, trolleys because, uh, okay, we have seven uh, models of machines, but these models can be customized in so many variations that we have 700 different variations. So we have 700 codes wow. for the machines. So the machine, the professional machine that are b getting built here, they move on trolleys. So we can move around depending on the configuration and on the specification and on the customization. Here, the only customization possible on the grinder is two colors, black and white. So they move on conveyor belts. Same for the Micra. So the machine, the Micras, they're not uh, traveling around the factory on trolleys, but they are built like, uh, almost like uh, with the Japanese uh, method. So we use the uh, same method that uses Toyota. It's called Kanban boxes. So basically we have employees that keep on filling boxes with parts uh, and they, they are responsible for filling this shelf with the parts needed to build uh, machines. Downstairs is slightly more dif uh, slightly different. What's so that's the production of the micro. What's the sort of time frame and how many per day can you build of, say, the grinder? Well, uh, the grinder, yeah, we are still in a ramp up phase, so we can build uh, 15 grinder a day. Yep. But we are planning to build many more. Uh, honestly, I don't know because, uh, well, a couple of months ago, there was only one line. Now there are three. So the, the figure that I know, they're already obsolete. I'm going to ask you the, the guy responsible. So make sure you, uh, you walk outside of the yellow line. Ciao, ragazzi. Sì, sì, voi? Go work, fellas. Yeah, love your work. Yeah. Mickers. Yeah, Mickers. Ciao. Leonardo non c'è oggi? Leonardo. Ah, vabbè. Eh, domanda scomoda che mi hanno fatto che non so rispondere. Quante macchine produciamo adesso qua al giorno? 
diciamo che 60 settimane, 50 settimane. Quindi sono 30 macchine al giorno? No. Eh? No, di più, scusami, eh? sì, 60 settimane. 60 al giorno. So here we produce 60 machines a day. 60? 60. Just Micra. Mini is downstairs. Unfortunately, we cannot go into the Micra section because it's getting uh, reorganized. Yeah. So, so it's closed, it's currently stopped, uh, and we are organizing the production. So is this new? This is very, very new. We started like yeah, uh, uh, yeah. it's awesome. at least uh, like maybe one year ago. This section was, uh, was built, and uh, until a few months ago, it, there was only one line. The three lines that you see here is yeah. very recent. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we build 60 machines a day here. 60? 60. Commercial or? No, just Micra. Just Micra. Pretty cool, very organized, so clean. Yeah, 60 so the machines machine are a day getting assembled there the that are bench tested here. And then in the last session, they get emptied and cleaned and blown. So they get it shipped completely dry. This is the, the, the bench test, finish. Bench test, uh, once the machine gets assembled, it's bench tested here. After the bench test, the machine travels all the way to that line where it gets emptied yeah. and blown. So it's, uh, when it, sh it gets shipped, uh, it's, it's completely dry because we don't want to, like uh, in case of uh, air shipping, air freight, uh, we don't want uh, water to freeze. Obviously, in, even just a little bit of water in the pipe can cause huge damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all uh, the same. Excuse me, boys. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, line. Thanks. It's it's a thing. Thing. Yeah, Sorry, mate. 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 Sorry, uh, many um, specifications as we have for the professional that uh, we need a different cable for every market, a different plug for every market, a different voltage and yeah. stuff like this. And it's running the same steel boiler? Yes, as you can see, this is the boiler. So in the case of a Linea Mini, it's vertical. Still, uh, uh, we have a double boiler, so it's a coffee boiler in the front and steam boiler in the back. Insulated. Yeah, insulated. Well, Micra is a, is a beautiful machine because um, obviously uh, being 30% uh, smaller than the Mini, it gets hotter in a, in, in a much quicker time. Uh, you can have uh, the coffee boiler heating in, uh, it's ready in three minutes and the steam boiler in five. So when you wake up in the morning, you turn on uh, the machine with the app and in five minutes you'll be able to do a perfect latte. How do you? No? Careful, it's powered. Yes, yes. And uh, also the steam is very, very dry because the ratio of water to steam is one third. Normally in every Marzocco machine with the vertical, uh, with horizontal boiler is half and half. Half water and half steam. Here is one third water and two thirds steam. So it's very dry and powerful. Is the so mini you can steam 300 milliliters of milk in uh, less than 10 seconds. Is the Mini the same? Because I always found the Mini steam to be amazing over the commercial machine. Uh, mini is still half and half, half and half. Uh, is horizontal boiler. Yeah, okay. This one, for uh, space uh, reasons, uh, we, uh, we decided to make it vertical in order to make the machine more compact. Mm. How do you find the smaller rotary pumps? They're performing well? Yeah, very well. Mm. Steel is a stainless steel uh, fluidotech pump, so it's like a like a professional 
pump, but smaller. Yeah. Mm. And do you keep copper copper pipes um, worldwide the same, or stainless steel for some? No, it's yeah. copper pipe. Uh, um, well, what you see here. Uh, all the, the pipes that are made in copper are saturated, so there is no air. Okay. So they will not oxidize. On the inside? Yeah. The only pipe that is not uh, saturated is the steam pipe, which, as you can see, is plastic. Exactly. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, That's it. Well, all machines are NSF certified. NSF certification, um, well, there are very, very strict regulation on uh, uh, heavy metals uh, release. So NSF uh, limit is uh, 50 parts per billion. It means that uh, the machine cannot release more than 0 0.00005 milligram per liter of uh, any metal. Yeah. We are within the Israeli regulation, which is uh, 10 par parts per million. So we are below one fifth of the limit of NSF. Wow, well done. That's very cool. So it's the safest and cleanest machine in the market. Every time you do a, um, a new model, even though this pump uh, is NSF certified, the solenoid is, do you still have to get the whole complete unit as yes. a package certified? Yeah. Well, NSF is a bit tricky because you can be NSF certified is if any parts of your machine is certified, but they don't care about the whole picture, the whole machine together. So sometimes, uh, uh, you can pass the heavy metals uh, certification by only um, making the analysis of each part, but not the addition of all the parts together. Okay, yes. But we actually do the whole together. Yeah, wow. So we go now to see uh, the welding section, which is my favorite. So we go downstairs to see there's just so much to see. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, way too much. We're seeing the evolving of the business. Yeah, it's too much. Um, and I, I look at all the little bits and I want to know about them. Um, but you can under. You can ask, like, I think I was just saying, every time. And there's some new stuff every time. Yeah. Like, if you said it was one building and now it's four. Mm. And that micro that's new to me, After all the drama four years ago, that wasn't even a thing. Yeah. I'd seen it in pre-production and R&D, but not. Now it's in development and probably flying out, so. Yep. The speed at which it happens uh. now because of the number of staff is crazy. Like, we used to be 340, now there's 300 yeah. in this building. Oh, maybe yeah. no, 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 uh, because we're supposed to wear safety shoes. But they're not here, so we need to get down from like the other part, part, on the other story, end. Good right? mission, yeah, it, it just... Um, the original I want to take a shortcut, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wow. For safety reason, we need to put uh, safety shoes. Yeah. And, and safety shoes yeah. on the other... It's funny. Building. It's piece by piece, and everything has a sort of purpose as they grow as well. Yep. Like, the pieces are built, purpose built for the area. Hmm. We used to do like a meeting, like a staff meeting, a global staff meeting, and we fit in here. We would never now. <laughs> yeah, big foot. There's shoes and shoes. Okay. We got M. This medium size. Uh, looks, looks like it, yeah. Bit of a S. Um, oh, we're gonna, same? Large, large. Shake. Okay. <laughs> Let's go and see yeah, the boys. Yeah, Yours look pretty splashed too as well. <laughs> so these yeah, are the frames of our machines. As you can see, very, very little plastic. We use 100% stainless steel. No, the, this is a PB, so every machine has its own frame. Ciao, grazie, non fa retto, sono già ammazzati tutti. Che palle sta roba qua dei puntali, oh. 26 persone tutti con le scarpe, è pesante, eh. Eh, bene, bene. 
Eh. Meno male. È vero cazzo? Madonna. So, uh, this is the warehouse of the incoming goods. So these are the parts that we use to build our machines. So there is not, uh, here we don't have a, a warehouse for the finished machines. The warehouse for the finished machines is down, uh, down, downtown in Florence, next to the airport, in a place called Calenzano, where we have a second factory. And we use that factory as a logistic point uh, where we uh, store all the machines. We build machines on demand. So as you can see from the production, every machine carries the name of the customer. So we don't have a standard product that then get, uh, placed, uh, gets into a stock or warehouse. Uh, and every machine that is built lives and goes to the, to the main logistic hub. So we don't keep uh, finished machines here. So this is, as I said, the incoming goods, so the parts that are needed to build machines. And uh, in next section, uh, we start the first part of the assembly, so we do the sub-assembled part. So the main hub. So this is a section where we do the first part of the assembly. So we, yeah. bo uh, we, we build uh, small parts together. Yeah. And they, this part then they get uh, into other section, uh, into the boxes that are hard. needed to build machines. Yeah. Eccolo! Follow me, follow me, careful, don't touch the boys are hot. Come say persone. Don't see how it's gonna be the key. Come this way. So this is a 24 group machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, well, here we cut the boilers. So these uh, huge pipes, uh, they're getting cut. We have three uh, so, and uh, each cut takes five minutes. Wow. Because we, are, we want to make sure that the cut is clean and straight. Yeah. After the pipe is cut uh, with, uh, with the right length, uh, then we need uh, to drill holes uh, to put the fittings. So each machine has its dedicated template. As you can see, that's a template for a GB54 group. Then we have a template for a mold bar. So this drill is meant to replicate on a boiler placed here the same hole that is in the template. So let's say that I have to do a linear classic uh, steam boiler. I take a blank uh, uh, pipe. I use the template, and every time I change the hole, this, the other hole the, in the other part is going to exactly be replicated. Yeah. How do you internally weld these yes, we parts do. on the inside? Yes, we do. I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's pretty tricky. Is that because they you were welding the outside, but it created a lip and then became a rust point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now we're welding from the inside. Nice. So once the, the bar is cut, then you, we need to clean it because uh, sawdust, metal sawdust, uh, can uh, rust and oxidize. Yes. So we have two washing machines and we place uh, the boiler to be washed with uh, citric acid at 10% concentration and then we uh, uh, rinse away the acid with baking soda. <coughs> These are Micra steam boilers, and that is mini steam boilers. You see a big difference in yeah. size. How far ahead is this kind of production like now? So mm -hmm. it, when will these go into a machine? Is this like just a general stock level you try and keep up to, or is it a week, three weeks? Uh, I think this is, uh, uh, I think a month worth of production. Yeah, right. So we have three different kinds of welding here. We have the steam boiler welding, 
which is made with, uh, uh, with two robots. We have KB90 boiler, coffee boiler welding, which is made with uh, another robot that welds from inside. And then all other welding are made by hand. Careful, don't, don't look at the spark. Ciao. Stai saldando, ci fai vedere un po' la saldatura? Sì, Grande. Sì, sì. Mettiamo, mettiamo il coso? Possiamo... Uh, I think that almost uh, 50% is well by hand. All the fittings are still well by hand. So now is uh, welding the end cap of a steam boiler. Look at the precision. This that's, is my made by hand. That's beautiful. It's 86 drops of stainless steel. How do you, um, because you don't, um, in the air here, mm -hmm. um, you've got obviously issues as well and other metals from other areas floating through. Do you ever have a problem with them coming in to affect this or your washing process fixes all of that? No. Uh, like well, in the weld, you know, like while welding, the penetration? Uh, the penetration, well, we use TIG. So TIG is uh, uh, yep. TIG. So yep. TIG is uh, tungsten inner gas. So we insulate uh, the welding uh, by um, blowing uh, argon gas, which is inert. Yep. So it avoids corrosion. And, uh, and burning. Yeah, I have a TIG, I have a MIG and yeah. TIG, and yeah, it's very, uh, beautiful. And then after, after we welding, we also wash away any, any trace of uh, burned and, uh, and corrosion uh, with the citric acid. Yeah, wow. Do you x-ray any welds to make sure, like uh, over time, like, you know, uh, get a we, random we batch? We did it in the past uh, to fine tune the welding process. Yes. After we, we had, uh, um, we actually demonstrated that all the 100% of the welding were okay. We stopped doing that. Yeah, sure. Wow. Oh yeah, like that's just epic kind of stuff. Like they got the best of the best stuff here. Like, you know, he's really just aligning, and then the robot's doing what it needs to do. Um, and as, uh, that's why I asked him, I said, do you, do you x-ray your welds? Okay. And so well, what we did, until we worked out what the formula is, and then we don't have to anymore. Because no. if you don't get the penetration through the metal, essentially right, it's yeah. not going to bind and seal. And then you've got a hole or a leak under pressure. Don't look at this part. It's yeah. better for your eyes. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and we test yeah, 18 bars. So we leave them here for a while to verify if there is any leak. Not so often. Yeah, three percent. Yeah. And when we find it, obviously we discard the whole boiler. Lamazoko really look after their staff and provide such a great workplace environment. Look at this cafe beside the production floor that they can come and have breaks. Those guys are just playing cards. How awesome is that? And here we build all the special machines. DBs and stuff are built. Uh, yeah, here we build Strad and yeah, Leva. And you still use, um, then we have Calenzano factory. Yeah, and for the new Classic S? Yeah, they play that, that one too. Is yeah, the two systems. Briscola or Scoopa? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, ask them. Could ask Scoopa Briscola? We, we do that as well, we, we buy the gear. Um, I know years ago the three groups, uh, the elements in transport were, were moving and snapping. Yeah. Um, what did you do to actually fix that? Did you just put a break? Now the eating elements are not anymore like this, they're like that. Oh, okay, just turning around for... So less stress. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, we made uh, also, uh, we reinforced the welding of the eating element. And we built actually a robot that was smashing eating elements all day long. <laughs> I'll show you that it's, it's, in, uh, it's in the lab. It's, it's just a robot with a wheel that bangs the eating element on a platform. And we, we did that to test uh, uh, the rigidity and the sturdiness of the eating elements. Yeah, and you're building your own element? Uh, we have uh, a trusted supplier which does that in not far from here. That's a very particular. It is, yeah, yeah. something that uh, we're not. Uh, we don't have the, 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 the skill set to do our own uh, eating elements. Most important thing that we do here is welding. Yeah. Are the um, are the cool touch stainless steel ones still done here by hand? Nope. You managed to automate that now. No, the cool touch steam one is something that we get from a, a supplier in the USA. They are uh, in the aerospace uh, market and they do insulation for uh, for airplanes and stuff. Okay. So originally they were all handmade. Yeah. But now it's all yeah bulk manufacturer. Yeah. So Luke, after working uh, on La Mazzocco machines back, you know, starting way back in your old cafe and uh, having you know so many ties to La Mazzocco over the years, this must have been some sort of like spiritual or nearly religious event, you know, like coming to Mecca or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, like huge attachment to the brand. Um, you know, I, I, I cut my teeth on these kind of machines and cut my hands, you know, working on them. Um, I used to call them cut mazocos. Um, but to come here and see that it, it isn't just a one piece of machine, that it is a whole culture um, and everyone is connected to that culture and they generally want to make better machines and, and improve the industry. Um, and just see how much technology that they keep putting into things and um, they're happy to fail, they're happy to um, let people be creative and, uh, and from that all these beautiful products we get to use have, have come about so it's, um, it's a very cool place. So I'm definitely humbled and, um, and honoured to be able to come and uh, you know, enjoy this and, and see you know, what it's all about. So what a fantastic place. After seeing all of this, it's no wonder why La Mazzocco are so highly regarded for their coffee machines. The attention to detail, the finesse, the amazing people that just become the whole brand of La Mazzocco. The generosity of La Mazzocco and this experience is something I will never forget. Well, this is a bit of a pinch yourself moment for me to be sitting next to the, um, the most intelligent man I know in the coffee industry and, and definitely someone who I admire, Guido. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the couch today. Um, mate, I'm, uh, I'm honoured to be here um, and in awe of everything that you've, you've created and um, to see the journey of La Mazzocco over the many years. We've been able to make the tour and, and see where the Bambi brothers have, you know, had an impact in the past. But as we progress forward, you know, you're, you're at the top now. 
What do you see is going to be your mark on the industry under the La Mazzocco umbrella moving forward? What are you going to be known for in the history, in the history books? Well, thank you for the international flatter. I wish I was that intelligent, but <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> um, the, the question, I mean, what we want to be renowned in, 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 uh, in the long-term future yeah. of our company, at least our time and age, yes. which is a progression of what uh, people that came before us have done, mm -hmm. paved the way for us to be here today is to be remembered as quality coffee. Like, that a, it's like a customer, consumer, walks into a cafe somewhere in the world and they say, oh, they have a Lamar's over, there's gotta be good coffee. Yes. So to be remembered as synonymous of great coffee, um, signing the, the best cafes of the world that are, by consequence, reputable. Okay, so really knowing uh, that uh, linking the end cup of coffee back to the quality of the machine exactly. and creating it, being known Which, for that. Which, if you want, not being roasters and always being in the backdrop of the cafe because the coffee is the protagonist and we like it mm -hmm. like this. We don't want to absolutely change that. Okay. But we like to think we are a good contributor to the quality of the cup and the consumer, for the consumer pleasure which is not always there. Okay. Not every country is like Australia, where you have great coffee almost everywhere, and there's a lot to do. Yep. And there's always a problem with the tendency to under underlook quality uh, mm -hmm. over money. Okay. Our um, business vision and mission statement is uh, to empower the world's baristas to make great coffee, but cafes to run successful businesses. And that's where we use this content to try and share and, and encourage people to do things. Um, can you please explain the, the vision and mission statement for La Mazzocco and how you think it affects everything we see here? Well, what you, hear, what you see here is the mission. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's an inspiration. Uh, for customer to invest and thrive in our industry or become more knowledgeable and get to learn uh, how beautiful this industry is. For yeah. example, we, were, we have received children from the uh, last year in high school lately and the whole purpose of their visit was to understand that being an, a, a mechanical engineer or an agronomist yep. and being involved with coffee is not that boring of a job. Mm -hmm. We saw the like a, a vision or mission statement written above the one of the espresso bars. Perceive. Oh, yeah. What 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 is the? the... Well, the, what you saw was the why. The why. Which is a okay. little bit different than the mission. So what yep. gets up? Why do we get up in the morning? Okay. We want to build relationships that enrich the life of others. Okay. Because that's what coffee is, is community, is social, is analogic. Yep. It happens in a cafe, it's a time of relaxation. And one of the few times you don't pick up the phone is either at the cafe or at a restaurant. Sure. And so for me, it's very important to be continuing that connection, that legacy, that relationship. You've been here at our events throughout hosting Milan and here at Academia with the launch of our exhibit and the Coffee Migrant Exhibition and you have seen the people, how they come together, mm -hmm. and how we still take our time and, our, and we pride ourselves to establish moments of joy, of community, of sharing a meal and sharing an experience. Mm. We certainly felt like we're part of the family being here. Thank and so you. thank you so much for the hospitality. Right. Um, right and we here. definitely feel it from, you know, being so far away, Australia's a very long way away, but the team there make above us all, feel so special as well. Come so from so far away to pay attention to what we do. Mm -hmm. And we feel morally obliged to reciprocate that effort to fly from all over the world to stay with us and not just shake a hand on a show, tell you how the machine performs in terms of you know, features and boiler size. Or mm -hmm. Our customers know that better than we do. Yeah. <laughs> because they're aficionados, they love the brand and yep. they know it and they, they are the ones who push us to improve the product. Mm -hmm. um, here, uh, uh, we want to create the connection, the community. So we have 
uh, a vision for the planet. We have a vision for the people. Yep. We have a vision for the product. And we also have to make profits to sustain our promise. Sustainability for us, for me particularly, but I guess I can speak for most of my co colleagues here at the factory, is lasting a long time. Yeah, sure. That's what it is. And so if we don't create an environment where people thrive, if we don't create an environment that is designed to last a long time, we're not sustainable. Hmm. No well, matter if you're using less plastic or... Sure. Well, the machines don't break, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> we keep rebuilding ours. And um, to see you're holding on to some of the heri heritage there and trying to learn the old trades, the old skills of working with brass and the one-off Bambi products is, is fantastic. Um, and the production floor was, was beautiful to see all Thank of that, you. so well done. Thank Not you. only the attention to detail in the, in the um, production line, but in the whole building, it looks, looks beautiful. The attention um, to detail is an obsession that we have. Yep. We think that we believe that the devil is, uh, hides behind the details. Mm -hmm. But also we know that the details, they create a better product, a better experience and a better everything. Mm. But it's still made by the man. And being artisans, doesn't mean being old style, dusty. You can be artisan in the modernist times. Yep. There was a few things that were pointed out actually that, um, that I picked up on. A lot of businesses are chasing the dollar and, and, and going in a particular direction. But it was expressed that people had the ability to be creative and the opportunity to fail. Is that something that you... absolutely right. There's only through failure that you that you can grow. I mean, when I look myself in the mirror in the morning and I think some of the mistakes I have done, to these days, I am still embarrassed. Oh, okay. And, and then I think, well, but if we didn't make those mistakes, mm. we wouldn't change, we wouldn't have changed, we wouldn't have done things that were not thinkable before. Yep. And yes, they still hurt some of them, but luckily, Yep. We leverage them to be better. I yep. don't think we couldn't have done what we've done without failing forward, as we say. Yeah, you got to fail to be able to pick yourself up, not make the mistake again, and okay. look towards the At future. At least not make the same. <laughs> Otherwise, you're a volunteer. <laughs> you're a volunteer. <laughs> uh, my last question for you is, uh, what was the best piece of advice that you've received, either, say, from Piero or, or anyone in the past that has, has always stayed true in your, in your mind? Because... You know, we think we might know it all, but definitely there's people, mentors that have, have helped us. So what's that one piece of advice that, that you always stick back to? There are several pieces of advice that okay. I can speak about. I'm going to tell you the one that reason, reason, this, to this day resonates in my mind more yes. than others, and is to control your mind. And it's something that you say casually. Parents, they tell your kids, control your mind. Don't be silly. Don't be... Mm -hmm. uh, but in reality, when you are doing an adventure and you are launching a project like this or some of our disruptive technologies or opening up offices around the world, hiring people uh, 20 <coughs> hours a flight away, mm -hmm. there is a moment where you become scared. Your mind wants to go to the, on the negative side. Your mind keeps saying, why do I do that? Do, why did I get tangled with this proposition? Do I really need it? <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. No, oh, don't worry. <coughs> it's about controlling the mind. You're controlling the mind. And even yeah. alpinists and stuff, they get to the last wall and it's always the steepest. I mean, the way that the mountains are shaped. Yes. Most of them. The and summits are the hardest. That's where you're tired and there's no air and there's no life. And they say, what do I do here? This is not good. I'm not going to make it. That's what I mean by controlling your mind. The mind wants to go to very bad places when you are exposed to the maximum risk of the adventure. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where I got taught to control it, not to let it go sure. into the negative and stay focused and positive uh, towards the success. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. You. We feel so very much having you. You're great people. I'm sorry I, I didn't have enough time to. No, it's okay. We appreciate the couple of minutes we had with you. So many people <laughs> <laughs> coming. They were spread so thin. Yeah. The next time, maybe in Australia, will be just just for us. We can go and have good coffee together. Sounds good. Thank you so much for your time, Rita. Thank Rita. you. Cheers.
because we've been having too many late nights and partying um, at all. Just uh, crowded train, up. crowded train subways. Yeah, crowded <clears throat> by people getting out in public. But, um, yeah, I'm starting to feel a bit better, which is good. Last night in Florence. It is indeed. Um, yeah, look forward to hitting the maybe the rooftop, have a couple of aperitivo, and. Um, Get, get everyone together from the, the Australian tour that's come out here uh, into Florence from um, Australia and a bit of a dinner, a bit of a farewell dinner. It's definitely been amazing to, to see the factory and uh, understand the heart of, of La Mazzocco. It's definitely family orientated and um, they're just so proud of their heritage and the quality of, of coffee. They're just going to keep keep holding up, it's, it's amazing. It's pretty cool having a chat to Guido on the couch. Yeah, it was great to be able to have a few moments with him. Um, you know, yeah, I think there's a fair bit of weight on his shoulders there to make sure it all keeps going, but he seems to be, as he said, uh, settle his mind and, and concentrate and uh, get through anything. So, really great advice for him there. So we've just finished our Florence leg of the trip where we've been hosted by La Mazzocco, um, Italy, and we've been able to uh, network with a lot of other people from Australia. Uh, we've been on tours uh, through the factory, we've been to the Academia um, del Cafe, which is the, the training centre and the learning hub essentially for La Mazzocco. And we feel absolutely honoured uh, to be on such a, a trip. So um, we've had meals out, meeting wonderful new people, um, being able to meet Guido and uh, actually understand where he comes from from a business and seeing how they view the industry and their family because you really do get the sense of being part of the family when not only here but all the way through with dealing La Mazzocco. They're, they're amazing leaders in the industry. We got to spend time with the R&D and tech guys and to see how much effort they put into making sure that their machines don't break, that they're durable and they last a long time. You know, we always thought that they lasted a while but that's actually been their plan. So that was amazing to be able to experience that. So huge thank you to La Mazzocco, not Australia, but also Italy and everybody. We just feel absolutely blessed to be experiencing this. So I hope you've enjoyed the insight into our trip here into Florence, where we've had a deep dive into a brand that we're passionate about, La Mazzocco. Uh, if you've got any further questions about the machines, the family, or anything that you may have seen, we'd love to answer it because the team is so open and I know we're gonna get the answer for you. So please do like and subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell and you'll be notified when we put up our latest video. There's so much more still to come on this Italian journey. So stay tuned. Thanks very much for watching everyone. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.